Welcome to the Moths of Essex County, Ontario, part two. Thanks for joining me. I trust this will be an interesting presentation. I hope so. So I will share my screen here and we will begin. So for starters, on this first slide, um, I have a probably one of the most exciting discoveries of this year was a zebra conchi lodes at Cedar Creek Conservation Area. A really cool moth. It's small, very dainty and delicate and beautiful. So to start off this presentation, I figured that I would go over the first presentation very briefly on this one slide. If you haven't watched it, I recommend you watch it. But basically, we talked about separating moths from butterflies. Most of us have a pretty good intuitive sense about what is a butterfly or a moth. We see a picture or we see it in the field. But there are not great hard and fast rules. There's a lot of usuallys with exceptions. We also talked about the incredible diversity of moths. There's an incredible number of species, many different locations, size, climates, etc. We looked at some really amazing moth facts. And so if you didn't watch this presentation, I guess I would just sum it up in this way. Moths are amazing and there are lots of them. So I guess that leads into the next question, how many? And I guess along with it, are there moths in Essex County? <clears throat> of course there's moths, but it is hard to know with how many due to underreporting. If you look at this chart, it becomes apparent that there's very few moths in Essex County compared to the world, but there are still a lot of species that we have. Roughly 160,000 species of moths in the world, 5,000 for Canada, 3,000 for Ontario, and Essex County will be below that. <clears throat> Unfortunately, though, due to a lack of iNaturalist data, it's hard to really know. Um, some of the data is not readily available to the general public in easy to access format. But on iNaturalist, there's roughly 944. Last I've checked, there's 944 species. So we have great habitat in Essex County. We have great diversity, especially as a Southern County with the Carolinian habitat. Um, we have some great southern specialties. The orange wing would be an example of a moth that doesn't appear elsewhere in Ontario. I've documented it to be present in roughly eight to 10 natural areas in our county from maybe like mid-May to late September. We also have some fall mi migrants and vagrants um, because of other, our southern location and some of the geographic factors. Unfortunately, Essex County does have some challenges when it comes to moth diversity. Much of the quality habitat that we once had has been replaced with strip farming, farmers fields, and subdivisions. There's also some species specific challenges. We have a lack of conifer stands, quality conifer stands. So it's hard to find some of the moths that are conifer specialists. Furthermore, um, Point Pelee would be an example of some great habitat that's not readily available to mothers. Um, this is not through firsthand experience, but I have heard stories of wardens discouraging the setup of lights um, for mothing. Um, due, for that reason, for the most part, my moth sighting data in Essex County does show a black hole in the Peely area, unfortunately. You can certainly find moths without lights, but I mean, that's a big part of how I find the moths that I find. There's also some difficulty with some of the bigger moths, um, Luna moth, Sphinx moths, daggers, much easier to find those up north in general. Now, if we compare us with other counties, we do quite well even in spite of the underreporting. I made a chart here that shows the 
by naturalist species of moths per county for some of the counties around Essex. And I think this really shows that we do need many citizen scientists, or as I would call them, enthusiastic amateurs to report their data. It's quite possible that Essex County may have more moth species than Middlesex, but we'll never really know until they get documented. And chances are they're not going to be documented by trained scientists. It may happen, but um, I think if there's going to be advances in the documentation of the biodiversity of moths in Essex County, it's probably going to come from people like you and I. I guess I did not mean to imply that there aren't any scientists watching this, but for the most part, we're amateurs and we have a role to play. So there's no way I could cover all the moth species in this presentation or even all the families or genuses of moths, genera of moths. So I figured I'd take an approach of giving a little bit more detail on three families and then giving a lot less detail than a bunch more families and we'll stick with that. So the first one I wanted to look at here is Saturnidae. These are the silk moths, emperor moths, royal moths. In general, they're bigger. They're very attractive. They're crowd pleasers. They have large lobed wings in general. Um, some of them could be pretty hard to find in our county. I've been able to see I think maybe somewhere around four or five Luna moths. Um, and many people haven't seen any if they haven't been actively looking for them. Um, so the Saturnids do not eat as adults. They have a interesting life of mate, fly, die, essentially. So then the next family would be Arabidae. This is a huge family. Um, a popular group of moths with, within this family would be Katak, genus Katakula, which are underwings with their beautiful underwing display. And there's the tiger moths, which are also pretty popular with their beautiful colors. And then there's the snout moths, zales, litter moths, a little bit more plain moths. Um, Another moth in this family that's of note is the black witch, which is quite rare in our county, a vagrant moth. Um, there's been recent sightings at Rosam Woods, Wheatley, and typically there's some sightings at Point Peely as well. I haven't seen it myself. So that's one of my targets. They're not as big as Saturnids, but they're not necessarily small either. I really like the Sphinx moths. So Sphingidae, some examples would be Virginia creeper Sphinx, which is quite common. The hummingbird moths are quite popular. So these are moderate to large in size, agile, streamlined, fast, and sustained flying ability. This leads to you know, many of the, the really exciting vagrants, which may show up in our county being the Sphinx moths. They can fly across a lake, et cetera. They have this weird hovering side slipping flying and some very interesting aerodynamic body shapes. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the lightning round and look at some more families. So Tortricidae and Pyralidae, they're really small moths. You may need a macro lens to enjoy them, but they're amazingly diverse and they're beautiful. Um, this one in particular is the box, boxwood leaf tier. Um, to me, it kind of seems like it's come right out of a Dr. Seuss story, but it has the weird feather on its leg and the pointy head and just a lot of interesting detail to it. That photo is not particularly good, but it does show some of the detail. Okay, then there's Crambidae. The Crambids are quite common. Some of them included in there are the grass veneers. You'll see those quite often during the day flying around in the grass. Um, I love the aquatic 
cranbids. They're interesting and beautiful. Um, they're quite common in residential lots um, and uh, definitely attracted to water. So you'll find them in wetland, natural areas that include wetland. Noctuidae is an amazingly huge family. Um, Noctua means little owl, so hence owlet moths. Cutworms, armyworms, a lot of the um, invasive pest moths with, are within here. Um, it's a gigantic family, like I said. They're medium sized and they tend to be a bit drab, but they have some interesting patterns and amazing designs. So I do like a lot of the moths in the Noctuidae family as well. So one of my favorites are the slug moths, which would be Limacotidae. So they're smallish. They're really interesting in the way their bodies are shaped. Um, they're called slug moths simply because their larvae resemble slugs. Um, the caterpillars are really cool looking, but don't touch them. A lot of them are stinging. And then we have Drapanidae, kind of an unusual choice for me to include here. Um, not much attention is paid to this family, but I think it's an interesting family. The most common one in our area is probably the rose hooktip. And they often have a hooked wing. And there's actually evidence that they have a unique hearing organ, which is interesting. So I could have included many more families, but I figured I would stop it here. So where can we find moths in Essex County? I think I want to express that you can find them anywhere, but we do need to drill down a bit because um, if you're trying to find them, you obviously want to try to go to places where you're more likely to find them. Um, and I think it's important to understand what are the ideal conditions for them. So quality habitat is key for good diversity and quality habitat basically means host plants alive. Um, you know, every moth has its preferred host plants, but not all host plants are created equally. Some are more or less appealing. Um, and, you know, we get some types of plants that are just have far more moth diversity. So we're looking for lots of quality native plants. It's a good place to start. In general, forests with a lot of oak will tend to provide the most diversity, but definitely other you know, native Carolinian species are, are very important for moths. And don't ignore it, residential lots, just because the habitat is disturbed doesn't mean it's void of moths. There's lots of great moths in the middle of the city and in subdivisions. And one that I've pretty, been pretty excited about a number of years ago, I had the moonseed web, webworm, which was an addition, a new addition to the Ontario checklist. And my lot isn't, you know, a lot that you would look at and assume it would have a lot of biodiversity. So the next slide, I figured it might be good to just highlight some of the key natural areas when it comes to moths. Of course, most of you probably know of these places. My favorite personally is Cedar Creek Conservation Area. Um, it has incredible moth diversity, great quality habitat, and it's just a beautiful area. Um, in a similar category would certainly be Ojibwe Prairie Complex. Um, Ojibwe Park, Black Oak, Spring Garden, Brunette Park, all of these are wonderful places and, and have you know, top tier moth diversity. So, I'd also include Point Pelee National Park logistics issues, notwithstanding. Made some conservation area can be quite good. Um, Devonwood Conservation Area, Copagaran Woods, and then some private lots that I've surveyed. Um, some areas which I haven't surveyed, and generally speaking, for the most part, people haven't been surveying, but could be really interesting would include Oakwood Park, Holiday Beach. McAuliffe Woods, Cedar Creek Provincial Park, Big Creek Watershed, et cetera. So I wanted to talk a little bit about my personal journey. Um, 
I've been interested in moths for a number of years, but most of my mothing was done out of county on vacation. Um, I've definitely mothed at quite a few local natural areas over the past few years, and it's been it's been quite a journey. At times, it's been a very social thing, but also a nice solitary activity too. Um, mothing is one thing where no longer how long you've been at it, you can get a life on every outing pretty much, um, unless you really get skunked. Um, birding, you know, once you've been birding for a couple decades, like. I think anybody who's been doing it for a couple of decades in one county and not traveling around are going to say, you know, they have a hard time finding lifers in their county. But with moths, it's very different. You don't know what's going to show up. And it's just an ever amazing stream of new moths. Um, I've seen 664 species in our county overall and 561 this year. This is presumably a small slice of what we have in. The county, um, especially when you consider you know stuff that hasn't even been added to iNaturalist yet, um, and those are just the ones I've been able to get an ID on. Um, moth ID can be very difficult. It's it's very easy to identify some moths, but other ones you you would need to dissect or you may need a picture at a particular angle. Um, if my pictures are blurry, in some cases that hinders it. In other cases. They're just not simply not identifiable from a photo. So on the bottom here, I have some pictures. Well, on the left two ones are my setup. The right one is a friend setup. Um, the gentleman on the right there, the far right, is David Beetle. You might recognize his name as the author of the Peterson Field Guide, kind of a standard field guide for moths. And in the middle there is Michael King. Um, he and David. Um, put together the Ontario Moss checklist. So it's a great amount of fun. And, and as you can see, like it's relatively simple. You know, you have a sheet, a rope, a light, a tripod in some cases. Um, this is, this talk will not get too much into equipment. So I'm just, but I'm highlighting that as we go. So my favorite mothing spot by far is Cedar Creek Conservation Area. It's a nice quiet place, um, great habitat, excellent moths. Um, I've documented 458 species there. So 48% of all moths reported in our county on iNaturalist have been reported at Cedar Creek Conservation Area. So that's quite remarkable. Um, it's a great place. Um, I did make a website, the URL is here, which highlights the moth diversity at Cedar Creek. And it includes a full species list. So my friend and mentor, Mo Bodice, who um, studies underwings, genus Catocla, discovered a new underwing species for Canada at Cedar Creek Conservation Area last year. I believe it was in September, if I remember correctly. So it's Robinson's underwing, Catocla, Robinsoni, and we found multiple of them there. So I was very happy to be able to be present for that discovery. Um, it was just a real thrill. Um, the ID can be very difficult. I'm sure I wouldn't have been able to figure it out on my own, but I'm very glad that I was able to be along with Mo as he discovered that. David Beetle, who I believe is from the Toronto, general region of Toronto, um, and the author of the field guide and the checklist also came later in that season and was actually able to see the new underwing species for Canada as well. So just gives you a little bit of a taste. There's Mo examining that species on a tree and the left is a shot I got from the side. Um, So how do I find and identify Essex County's moths? Once you have the location down, it's not really much different in our county versus elsewhere. Um, this presentation has purposely restrained, has been restrained from getting into the equipment and tools of the trade, saving that for the third and final installment. Um, here, Mothy Mothy is an unproven technique as of yet. Um, I'm still collecting data, but there's some anecdotal evidence that it does work quite well. So. Take that for what you will. 
Well, I'm looking forward to next time and thanks for joining me. Take care.